Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Thursday, October the 18th. I'm Clay Emo at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. And this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's game day tonight. The Vancouver Canucks take on the Winnipeg Jets. The last game of their six-game road trip. Very successful road trip no matter what happens tonight. They were 3-2 and two on this road trip, 4-2 and two overall. And they bring their eight points into Winnipeg. Winnipeg, basically the same record. They're 3-2-1. and one. So they have seven points over their first six games. So really an even matchup, at least on paper. I think expectations for Winnipeg were a lot higher than the Vancouver expectations, of course. Let's talk about Winnipeg very quickly. They're actually my second favorite team in the entire league. Not just because, you know, I'm not a bandwagon jumper. I just didn't get on board last year when they became really good or a couple years ago when they started to become really good. You know, my cousin Dusty, he's the goaltending coach in the LA Kings organization right now. He actually uh, coached for two or three years in Winnipeg. So he worked with guys like Connor Hollebuck and Michael Hutchinson. I remember back in the day, five, six years ago, Dusty would tell me how good these two guys were and how special they were. And we're starting to see that at least in Hellback for sure. So I like Winnipeg for that reason. I was also there twice this past May to do some speaking engagements uh, for church. And I really like the city. You know, not a lot to do there, but the people are, are very friendly. And the hospitality was, was great as always. They call, After all, they call it friendly Manitoba. So I do have a soft spot in, in my heart for the city. I, I love the city. And I was there when the Canuck, uh, Canucks, when the Jets were playing the Golden Knights. And I, unfortunately, I was there when the Golden Knights ousted the Jets from the, the playoff series there. So all to say, yes, I do like Winnipeg. Obviously, I don't like them as much as Vancouver. I'm looking forward to an entertaining game. Vancouver struggles in Winnipeg. They haven't won there since 2014. And they struggle in against Winnipeg overall because uh, and, and Winnipeg swept the three-game uh, series last season. Winnipeg is good. I talked about Hellebuck. He's one of the, I, I'd say he's one of the top five or six goaltenders in the entire league now. On D, of course, you have Dustin uh, Bufflin. And then forwards, you, their top six is very strong. Shifley, Wheeler, Connor, Little, Ehlers, and um, I'm missing someone. There are six. Wheeler, Line, Shifley, Connor, Little, and Ehlers. Oh. I can't remember who I missed. But yes, those six guys, very good. Bottom six strong as well. They're a fast team, a strong team, um, um, a very skilled team. And I can see why not just the Canucks, any team would have trouble playing against Winnipeg. So that's Winnipeg. For Vancouver, unsurprisingly, the exact same lineup as the one that took the ice on Tuesday night in Pittsburgh. So that means up front, it's Horvat, Berchi, and Besser. It is Godet be between Ericsson and Godobin. Both Ericsson and Godobin have, have dried up a little bit, so hopefully Godet or someone can get them going. Third line of Vertanen and uh, Roussel surrounding Brandon Sutter. And the fourth line, it is Marcus Granlin between Tim Schaller and Tyler Mott. And we know that the fourth line was our MVP line last game, shutting down Sidney Crosby, scoring a couple goals as well, or at least being on the ice for a couple goals. So um, exciting to see that the fourth line is playing well. Exciting to see the whole team playing with a lot of speed. And I've heard a lot of analysts and a lot of fans talk about recently that that's the big noticeable difference. And of course, you lose guys like Sidney and and Vanek. The three, very skilled, but not very fleet of foot. Obviously, team speed has improved a lot this season. Everyone's playing well. That's why there's no lineup changes. That means, um, uh, also, then they're on D. You have Tanev and Edler. You have Hutton and Stetcher. I love the combination of Hutton and Stetcher, actually, because they're both fast skaters. They both are unafraid to try things, and they're both good at getting the puck out of their end. So uh, Tanev and Edler, Hutton and Stetcher, and then Pugliot and Gibrantz. That means Michael Delzato sitting out. That means Brendan Leitzik is the odd man out up front. And, that, and Anders Nielsen making his fourth straight start. Makes sense to me. I'm not worried about losing Jacob Markstrom mentally. It's early in the season. There's been no back-to-backs. At least one day or two days rest between each game. So Nielsen makes his fourth straight start. He's, he's got awesome stats so far. Uh, goals against average uh, under 1.7. Uh, save percentage over 940. So he's doing well to start off the season. But I look to see Markstrom, no matter what happens tonight, I see Markstrom starting uh, the, the next home game against Boston on Saturday, but we can worry about that later. So same lineup, that means Delzato sitting out for his fifth straight game. That means Markstrom sitting out for his fourth straight game. But as many of you said on my YouTube channel, on my, on my video from yesterday, they're, you're not too worried about their mental games, Delzato and Markstrom, because if they're good teammates, they should see that the Canucks are playing well. And as the old adage says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. A couple other things I want to talk about really quickly. Mike Matheson, uh, made talked to the media yesterday apologizing stating his remorse for Pedersen's injury said that he reached out to Pedersen and Pedersen to his credit reached out back or answered back and uh, it was good that Matheson um, reached out to him talked about the fact that despite how he even admitted it, it, the, it looks bad the video looks bad but he wasn't embarrassed he didn't try an injury he's not a dirty player and he was just trying to make a, a solid hockey play so you know, I think we were all mad, of course, when it happened last Saturday, but I think people have calmed down a bit in the last few days. 
But, you know, obviously uh, it helps that Pedersen sounds like he's making a good recovery. You never want to sp- rush those things. But he's, uh, he's working out and, and things. And he's looking like he's on doing the proper things with the concussion protocol. And maybe he gets back in the lineup sooner than later. So the fact that Pedersen's doing better, the fact that Matheson was very humble, contrite, and I believe him, you know, as a member, a co-founder of the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, the GLCPC, I try and be positive, I try and be optimistic, try and be nudge, non-judgmental, of course, and and uh, try, give people the benefit of the doubt and uh, give people the, you know, trust people when they, when they talk. So all those things, I, I think Matheson is telling the truth when he says he didn't try and hurt Pedersen and that he feels bad about it. So maybe Canucks fans can move on from this and Pedersen returning the lineup, Canucks playing well, that will help us move on. One other thing the Canucks fans should move on from is Patrick Liney's comments in the preseason about, you know, when the whole story came out about the Canucks banning Fortnite and, uh, and video games from their road trips, Liney basically sarcastically and, and very lightly said, oh, they're just looking for an excuse or a reason as to why they were so bad last year. And then a lot of Canucks fans were up in arms, they were in an uproar, but you know, something like that, I think it's kind of funny actually. Um, it shows Liney's personality. I didn't take it personally. I know a lot of Canucks fans did. And between the Pedersen injury, you know, screaming for Matheson, and to give death threats to Matheson over social media, and to give death threats to Matheson's dog over social media, I think that's going a little too far. Whether that's uh, Canucks fans or non Canucks fans, we know it's a small percentage. It doesn't represent all Canucks fans. Obviously, it gives Canucks fans a bad name, but we got to remember, just like in anything, it, it's a very small percentage. But of course, a small percentage of Canucks fans got upset about this Liney comment, and Liney kind of shrugged it off today, saying, you know, I, I just was, was trying to be funny or whatever. I'm not going to worry about it now. I have a game to concentrate on, which I completely agree with. But Canucks fans, you can't blame their passion. You can't blame their loyalty for the team, to the team. But I think the Pedersen injury, which some of it was warranted, and this Liney outrage, it just shows that sometimes Canucks fans go a little bit overboard. And like any fan base that's passionate, that loves their team, they're going to take things very personally. And they're going to stand up for their for their, their players, of course, and their, their fellow fans. So uh, as I like to say, I'm not here to judge. I can't blame Canucks fans. But I think some of them got to take a chill pill once in a while. And I think a lot of times, you know, Twitter is good for this. You state, a, you state a, a point, you do a tweet, you get some traction behind it, and then you go with it. And whether it's, it's you know, a lot of people look up to certain journalists in the city and whether it's you know piling on or taking one of their points and going with it or a lot of, I think a lot of Canucks fans also don't come up with their own original ideas too they just like to, to take what someone else came up with and, and not make it their own but try and uh, you know try and perpetuate it that way what am I trying to say I'm trying to say Canucks fans it's great that we're passionate it's great that we love our team but like with anything uh, moderation is key um, let's have some temperance and let's kind of really get passionate about what's important what 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 we should get passionate about things that are important and not necessarily if they're playing video games or not rather how are they how are they doing on the ice lastly reminder that tonight after that was kind of philosophical of me lastly after tonight's game right after the game i'll jump on a youtube here for about 30 to 45 minutes for a, a live stream a post game live stream of the canucks jets game we can talk about the the team overall talk about um the road trip overall, talk about the players that are sitting, and of course talk about Patterson's injury, Besser's reemergence, and of course tonight's game. So join me on YouTube at the conclusion of the game, uh, uh, live st- post-game live stream. Um, yeah, and I'd love to answer your questions. I learned a lot from the last time I did it last week. I can't wait to do this, and I think the early game helps. That way you're not staying up till 10 or 10.30 to watch, to watch me or to, to interact with me. So come on by, uh, leave a comment, leave a question on the live stream and I'll make sure I, I, I do my best to get to it and answer it spontaneously. That, that'll be a lot of fun. Similarly, leave a comment below. I'd love to read, react, and reply as always. Let me know what you think about the lineup changes. Do you agree with that some of our Canucks fans uh, not give us a bad name but are a little bit rabid, a little bit sometimes over the top, but or maybe it's fine. Maybe that's what it means to be a fan. After all, fan is short for the word fanatic. Leave a comment below. I'd love to read, react, and reply. Subscribe if you like this channel. Like this video if you like this video. And enjoy the game tonight. I will see you back here on YouTube right after the right after the conclusion of the Canucks Jets game. God bless and go Canucks go.